This is Sneaker Gears. My name is Levi. I am back. So is my boy Nate. Yo, welcome, know, YouTube know, family. Been a while, been a while. Sorry, guys, life hits you. Uh, we've been blessed doing a lot of other things. We're going to make time to be coming right back at it. But we are back today with a long overdue video and a ton of content to bring you when we're able. So without any hesitation, uh, let me say first at least, thank you, all my subscribers, all the guys who are Instagramming me, tweeting me uh, in the comments, uh, just giving me encouragement, uh, even calling me out, hey, where you at? It's, uh, it keeps me humble and it's really, really appreciated. You guys, uh, I know I'm a very small part in the, the sneaker community, uh, but uh, I love doing performance reviews, I love training, uh, I love sharing any wisdom or knowledge that I can, and to know that there's uh, at least some people out there who are listening is an absolute blessing and humbling experience, so thank you guys. Let's get right at it. As you see on the background, Hyperdunk 2016 Flyknit, finally have a full review comparison coming at you and honestly the nike zoom ascension the nike zoom clear out the nike audacity oh god what am i missing yeah the jordan ultra fly extra fly super fly uh the nike zoom clear out you know hopefully i got all of them they're all trash don't buy them. There is no reason to buy any other Nike or Jordan team shoe or all shoe when you have the Hyper Dunks. And I can say that, it kind of spoiling the ending, it doesn't do any one thing amazing, but it does everything really, really well. And it's the first time we're having proper zoom since the 2011 Elite. Last year, I know they brought Zoom back to the Hyper Dunk. It was garbage. Uh, for those of you who did enjoy it, I'm glad you did. It was a good looking shoe, but honestly, if you tried any other shoe, they weren't really executed that well by any means. Now, I am excluding the Hyper Rev 2016 because the 17 is coming out. Those are also a decent shoe, but we will get right into the fit. All right, so the fit on these guys is wide foot friendly. On the Zoom version, or the Fly Knit, it is about a half size long. I went with the 12, probably could have done 11 and a half. I went with this colorway because these just look sick. But honestly, I was able to try on the non fly knit and those in a size 12 fit perfect. Uh, I would honestly just go with those. There's not a huge difference between going from those to these other than the, I'm a sucker for fly knit and these look incredible. All right, the upper on these is all fly knit, but it's, it's a weird fly knit. So the entire lateral side is actually, you hear that? It's, it's all plastic up front. It's still pretty firm, even on this side. Very reminiscent of your Kobe 9s, where it's, it's fly knit, but it's such a heavy glue background or plastic. Uh, it's meant there for support, but it definitely it's not true fly knit as we know it. The Kobe 11s, which are almost my favorite fitting shoe up until i'm not going to tell you guys but i do have about five pairs of these so that's how well they fit just to give you an idea this is true flying it i don't care what anyone says out there you have that fishnet in there it moves with you it breathes with you these are incredible for almost a, a naked kind of foot feel like you're playing in some vibrams so the entire inside of these as well as some of the heel going all the way up is really nice and loose. Overall, really nicely done, and it does take some break in time just because of this. So I would say it actually took probably three hour and a half, two hour sessions before this was actually molded to my foot really well, and it just had a nice fit. Nothing like the KD9s where they were just agonizing, but it just wasn't molded just right until then. All right, the best part of the Hyper Dunk 2016 is flat out the cushioning. This is what sets it apart from the rest of the team shoes. Now you can say at 140 or 130, it still costs a bit more than the rest of that lineup. Uh, but a lot of these go on sale really quickly. They've been available for 80, for 90. There's no reason to get any other ones. And I'll get right into that cushioning. Kind of have this nice setup here, give you some examples. The only other Flyknit Nike with full length zoom is going to be one, your KD9, but that's Zoom Max. And two, if you guys happen to get the Nike ID on the Kobe 11, 
and those gave you that full length zoom option. Both of these are going to be slightly different than what's coming on the Hyperdunk, and that's because the Hyperdunk is now almost the only proper shoe that has unlocked zoom. So the unlock zoom last iteration we got was in the Jordan 30 with the unlock four foot zoom. I traditionally do play with this with a heel zoom unit that you can get out of any Nike SB unit, uh, like a Zoom Janowski or something like that. But this is unlock zoom. So if you guys take a look at this, I know it looks really, really similar, but I'm gonna give you an example really quick. Let's see if we can zoom in on this. This is actually part of the shank plate really hard not very forgiving pretty similar now if i come back into this one you're going to see there's actually a lot of give in there there's a pressure almost as this is an air unit so the zoom bag is encapsulated in an air unit so this entire zoom bag does give a lot of flexion up and down it is not as trampoline like as the kd9 zoom max but it's a lot more responsive, which is why this is an awesome setup, whether you're a guard or a big man, whether you're driving to the hoop, whether you're taking jump shots in the outside, or you're banging down low, this cushion setup is unbelievable. It is actually going to be probably the closest setup to uh, any of your Adidas boost setups, which are almost all really nice. And I have a full review on those coming up. But the only negative on this shoe, if there is going to be any, is going to be you do sit high up. You do feel kind of like the LeBron 10, where you're, you're way up in the air. So there is a negative side to that. We'll jump right into that. The stability on the Hyper Dunk is probably the only really lacking thing to me. It doesn't have necessarily a completely flat base it really does feel like you're able to roll any which direction. So again, it does feel natural, but at the same time, because you're so far up, as opposed to having something like this, which literally feels like you're playing on a two by four, like this thing is not bending, it's not moving, so you makes up for the fact that you're so high off the ground. This is a lot more flexible, it does move with you, it's a lot lighter, so you do wanna move around, but what happens is, it doesn't give you that security where you feel planted. At any point, you can roll either which way just because it is so easy to roll and because you are sitting so much higher off the ground. Now, you do have a proper heel cup that's holding you in, but you don't have a proper shank plate and you don't really have too much support any which way. So, I mean, it's not as strong you can bring as the KD9 knit. So the KD9 knit is such a strong kind of chain link along with that almost flight web system that you're really held in a lot better. And you can even take a look, the heel cups are similar, but just that knit, that support, you do feel a lot more secure in a KD9. And just because that KD9 does come down from a thicker zoom unit all the way to a more narrow one, and you can tell a little more on the medial side, that you never really feel like you're too high off the ground on these. Uh, difference in cushioning on these two is really gonna come down to this one. If you're a bigger guy on 240, you potentially do are able to bottom out. But at the same time, this really feel like a trampoline. Uh, it also makes you feel a little bit slower if you are driving to the basket or doing hard cuts. So I wouldn't recommend this necessarily for the quickest guy, but this is the best cushioning that Nike offers as far as having the most protection. This is going to give you the best cushioning overall, no matter what style of play you are. But just know that stability is just slightly off where I can't recommend that for every player. Last part is the traction. Now, traction really just has three tiers. Honestly, you either have trash, you have something that works really good, you're happy with it, you can trust it, you got to wipe it every now and then, and you have just phenomenal traction. Uh, I try to use the DJ Khalid where I want to grab another one. I appreciate you or don't play yourself all right so these are I appreciate them they're, they're okay they do a good job honestly because of the look of them they are very similar to your hyper revs and I think the hyper revs probably were a little bit better just because it does use a slightly softer compound and then outside of that the Kyrie's are another one where they look really similar and again, the Kyrie 2s just do a lot better job of the traction. And again, I think it has more to do with the compound. It's a little bit harder, maybe the spacing. 
it's a slightly wider apart, but for whatever reason, the Kyrie 2s do a lot better job. So I was expecting more when it came to this, just because its ancestors, as it were, did a very good job. Now, I would say the Kyrie is Nike's highest level of traction uh, as far as today. I know you guys can talk about the Jordan 28, the Kobe 9s, and so forth, but the traction on these remind me the most of the Kobe 10s. And so what I mean by that is, they did a really good job, but you kind of were dusting. You didn't 100% trust them. Certain conditions, all of a sudden, you would slide for no reason. So uh, these were reminiscent of that where I always felt like I needed to wipe it down. But then after I wiped it, it didn't actually make it better, but it wasn't that bad. <laughs> so it was, they were okay. You know, I never was able to trust this shoe 100% uh, where I want to go hard. Uh, I usually played these when I was just playing for two, three hours, when I was doing games of 32, where it didn't matter. You know what I mean? I'm not getting paid for this. So now if I'm really competing, there's other shoes I'm going to put on. When I'm trying to play hard, there's pretty much almost any other shoe I have in my collection I'm going to be putting on. But when I'm just hooping it up, just having some fun, these were absolutely phenomenal. Again, because of that rollover, uh, I was always going maybe seven tenths six tenths i'm not going to go all out just because i know hey i'm not going to roll my ankles for something now i have been dealing with a few injuries so that's a little bit part of why i haven't been at it uh but that's not an excuse but just to give you guys an idea any player no matter what your position no matter what your size these things rock if you get them at a good deal if you're getting that 80 to 100 dollars price range i'll put some links in the description especially with black friday going on cyber monday holiday seasons you cannot go wrong with hyper dunk if you are getting a team shoe this is something especially in this colorway i loved it the n7 colorway is something that looks phenomenal and this is a shoe that i just absolutely uh, appreciate coming from so long wanting a full link zoom and flying it upper and lo and behold in 2016 you have a plethora of options for flying it and full length cushion guys hopefully that helped you we do got a lot of videos lined up a lot of comparisons we're going to be coming at you with so you can have a really good idea of what you're buying what works best for you and what's the right gear for the right person this is levi with sneaker gears if you like that video please give it a thumbs up shoot it in the comments below i will be re-interacting with all my subscribers going forward again thank you so much guys i do apologize for the absence we will be coming at you nate thank you man for all the work that we're doing here and all my subscribers appreciate you guys we'll be coming at you later